my son and daughter, they both run, you know, track and they do football. He does. It's his last off season. I had them choose five of their friends and we have a you know $50,000 gym in our house I built out. And so we legit just, I trained six kids, including them. And we just did a whole six month program. They all came out monsters. It wasn't just the physical part. That's the big key, right? It's it's when your son does that, when my son does it, when my daughter does that, they leave with this investment bias of I've done that too much work in the dark to lose in the light. And really in the defining moments of our lives, we all need that. We need a deposit of somewhere along the path, like weeks or months, if not years years of just daily work that was so hard that when I show up to this defining moment in my life, I'm not going to let you take it from me. Welcome back to the What Are You Made Of show here on Fireside. It's your boy, the unstoppable Mike Seacrock. Seacrock, I'm going to say my last name wrong. The unstoppable Mike Seacrock. Hey, listen, this uh, past week, I went through a little turmoil. Myself and a group and a community went through a little turmoil. And it was over on the Clubhouse app. And, you know, it just reminds me that no matter what you're doing, you can always face some adversity. And I navigated this adversity to the best of my abilities with what I've learned and what I've developed over the last four years. Uh, Because I've really leaned into when this stuff comes up, how to handle it. And there's a lot of people involved in this thing because Clubhouse is a lot of people. And it it was kind of interesting to navigate and figure out you know, I look at things like a game and, you know, I, I just I just played the game the best of my abilities and being true to myself, no matter what was being said and what rumors were being spread about other people to me and all this other stuff. There was a lot of chaos and it felt like war. Sometimes in war, it's like it's, 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 it's there's a fog. So it was really interesting. And what I want to just say, though, is that we worked through it. We got through it and people came, calmer, calmer heads prevailed. And I think a lot of people learned a lot of lessons from it. And it was phenomenal. So if you guys want to visit us on Clubhouse, we got the Sea Rock experience over there. Go check us out. Uh, today we got a great guest. He's an old friend of mine. He's been on the show before. Anthony Trucks is in the house. I've been on his show. He's doing some amazing things, has done some amazing things. We want to hear what he's working on now. He's an author, speaker, consultant, former NFL athlete, and three-time American Ninja Warrior on NBC. He is the founder of Dark Work, where he helps people optimize their identity for peak performance. He does this by elevating people to a dominator's identity with a dark work mentality of, quote, I've done too much work in the dark to lose in the light. Anthony, welcome to the show, man. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. I, I just, that was a good intro. It's a good intro, man. I like it. Well, good. I, I didn't was write professional that. I, was I know you didn't, I, I but you had to state it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you back, man. Great to have you back. So what's what's the latest, man? What have you been working on? Oh man, life, right? We're all working on life. I'm working on uh, an amazing family, a wife that I love, just got back from running her. Uh, she's the 2023 35 to 39 outdoor masters champion for the 100, 200, 400 opens, and then the four by one and four by four. So she's killing it. My oldest son just got done with his freshman year running track at University of Oregon. Uh, and tomorrow, my twins go up to Eugene, Oregon, my son's home school, to run in the Junior Olympics for the year, which is the, you know, the whole entire country for the youth come together. And they're seated like, I want to say like seventh and eighth or something like that. Number one in our region for the 100 and 200 hurdle. So kids are doing good. Business is good. I'm doing the dark work, which is awesome. I just got back from Amazon uh, for a full day with them. Their executives out in DC for a day, like last what, five days ago, maybe. And uh, and then I coach speakers in, on how to actually speak and run a business around speaking that leads to coaching and consulting. So that's kind of my world in a nutshell, man. Love it, man. Hey, so the kids got, got their speed from the mom, right? No, I don't know, man. She's faster than me now. But like I was I was speedy when I was in college, dude. I was the like I might have been the third fastest on my entire football team as a linebacker. Like I was a, I was a get up and go kind of dude. So they got the genetics from both of us. Yeah. Did they play football at all? Any of the kids? My youngest does. I'm actually his head football coach for his eighth grade. Well, eighth grade eight. Yeah, I think we're going to call it eighth grade football team before he goes to high school next year. So like in the evenings tonight, 645 to 845, I'm head coach, man. Diving in. First time being a head coach, actually. I've always been an assistant coach, but now I'm I'm the guy, which is it's interesting to have the the whole, you know, like I'm leading the show. But I got a lot of a lot of things in the pot stirring, bro. That's awesome, man. My son's going into a senior year. He's six one, two forty, uh, which is great because nice. I'm five seven. Oh, you <laughs> so five, huh? My son's telling gotta, me too. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good with it. I'm good with it, man. Because listen, <laughs> you know, and 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 he's like not fat, he's like jacked, right? Two forty yeah. at, at seventeen, he just turned seventeen. So uh, I'm proud of him, and and you know nowadays it's different in football because when I was playing, we didn't we worked out in this crappy gym, and well we didn't even know what we were doing. There was some 72 year old yeah. coach, he didn't yeah. know about lifting, rest on the bars. And yeah, man, it was ridiculous, and we didn't really lift I that often. 
So they have a full season, like whole all year round thing, seven on sevens going yeah. on. They got turf. Yeah. And now they're just putting in a $400,000 college type LED like scoreboard with video. They're going to have multiple yeah. camera yeah. angles this year, replays. It's, wild, lot, man. Man. Hey, it's It's getting, so, getting it, they're bringing it all down deeper and deeper. Like the, the youth or high school is getting level of college, which is good. Like I grew up the same way, man. I used to love the grittiness of the, uh, like the the weight room because I didn't know I'd do it either when I first started. Actually, when I first did my dark work, the first window of time was that I would go to the gym by myself. I'd leave with legit like red on my hands from the rust and the bars and moving plates. But something to it. But now that, as much as they have all these amenities, I think they are robbing the kids a little bit of the hardship necessary to be monsters. So I love that your son gets after and goes. That's the thing. My son, he's doing his day is great. He's just he likes to stand near me and like look down at me like get away. I hit him in his throat. Bastard, get away! Uh, <laughs> which son, which son is this? How how old is he? This is a track athlete. He's uh, he's eighteen. He'll be nineteen 18, in November. Okay. Now my fourteen yeah. year old will be fourteen in August. He he he's on the path of being taller than, than me as well. So, but he may be the guy that will be jacked hopefully. But I, I actually I do that. What you're talking to my my son and daughter. They both run you know track and they do football. He does. And so it's last off season. I had them choose five of their friends, and we have a you know fifty thousand dollar gym in our house. I built out. And so we legit just, I trained six kids, including them, and we just did a whole six month program. They all came out monsters, but it wasn't the, it wasn't just the physical part. That's the big key, right? It's, it's when your son does that, when my son does it, when my daughter does that, they leave with this investment bias of I've done that too much work in the dark to lose in the light. And really in the defining moments of our lives, we all need that. We need a deposit of somewhere along the path, like weeks or months, if not years, of just daily work that was so hard that when I show up to this defining moment in my life, I'm not going to let you take it from me. And I think that's what allows our kids, like your son as well, to go and dominate beyond the, not just, you know, the football field, but in life. Man, I love that. I love that. Now, is that your quote? Mm-hmm. It was an accidental quote, too. As it, it, it came out of, I've been giving speeches for years, and I've always had the same speech called Makeshift Happen, which, you know, identity shift you're aware of. And there's always a statement in there of like <clears throat> a time when I was actually doing work as a freshman because my first couple of years of football was horrible. Eventually made it to the NFL, obviously, but I was horrible, man. There's one window of time where I was like, I didn't like sucking at this anymore. I wanted to be great. So I go, what do great people do? And I looked at the identities of people who were great football players. And what they did is lifted weights, ran routes, you know, dull stuff. I was like, I guess I got to do it. And like anything you start that's new to you, you don't feel comfortable. Like, it's like, what is this? Like, I'm not a guy that lifts weights. I don't run routes. You know, I don't do these things. And even worse, some people make fun of you. Teammates who make fun. Oh, trucks, you just got skinny, bro. Why are you in the weight room? You got butterfingers. Why are you catching football? So you have this ridicule. It's people misunderstand what you're doing. It's hard, right? But the thing is, the more you do it, like I did it back in the day, I just did it for seven months. And when I showed up to the football field my sophomore year, I was a different monster inside. I had the mentality of like, this football in the air is mine. I don't care if they do it to you. If you have the ball coming towards me, you don't get past me. And if I have the ball, I'm scoring a touchdown. I've done too much work in the dark when you weren't watching to lose right now. That became this mentality that I didn't even know was breathing inside of me. And it just lived through that, through college, through the pros, right? It was just that I had to rebuild it when I was an adult. But that's kind of been the, the aspect of all the successful athletes or humans I know is we all can do some work, but those who did the hardest, darkest work when we show up against the opposition, and it could be us, it could be opposition of competition, it could be just life, it could be a new situation you didn't expect. Some people just, they, oh, they sink back and they go, that sucks, right? Some people go, ain't no way. I don't care. Like, there ain't no way this is about to be for nothing. Ain't no way about to take this from me. And they lock into a different place. And that place they lock into, they draw on their darkness. They power themselves differently to overcome the situation. Yeah, I love it. So, so... I always say this, like if you talk enough, like we do, we're on podcasts all the time. Mm -hmm. You're speaking all the time. You're coaching all the time. You know, I, I do a clubhouse room every day, maybe two times a day mm -hmm. sometimes. And I'm talking, mm -hmm. talking. I get home, the kids, like they want to talk. I'm like, I'll listen to you guys talk because I don't want to talk yeah, anymore. Right. But when we talk that much, eventually you got quotes. Like there's quotes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and it's out, better man. to have your own, you know. So, so have you gotten sick of the podcast world yet? Like we've done so many. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many podcasts you've done. I've done almost a thousand. In the last three and a half yeah, years. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, I, well, I have one now that we're at episode 300 and, shoot, I wanted like maybe say 80, but prior to that was the Trust or Hustle podcast. And then I record a daily podcast, seven minutes every day. We're at episode 710 every weekday. Um, I think, no, we're at episode 706 today. And so, yeah, thousands. I just, and I think the, the thing for me is I've always found that as long as, 
as long as I am doing the podcasting, I have to make sure that I'm consistently having content to talk about. And it triggers me to go, I'm going to be in front of a situation. I better prepare for it, right? I'm going to be in a situation on stage or a pod. So I consistently learn. I'm still reading books. I'm still watching things, consuming content, learning from my own life and the situations that are in front of me. Because I think that's one area we don't always pay attention to is life provides an amazing classroom, but some of us are sleeping through the class. We're there, right? We're in the middle of the thing, but we don't realize like, oh, this dynamic I have with my son, there's something deeper to this. Oh, the situation I ran into at the store, like there's something deeper to that. Not that it's some philosophical thing of like the world spinning and, you know, Jupiter's ascending, whatever the heck. But like there is something to go, this interaction could have taken place differently had I done this, or had I saw this, or had I asked this. And so I consistently try and learn because I'm consistently teaching or talking like you talked about. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Sometimes I get so busy, I stop reading, man. I get so like lined mm-hmm. up and I'm like, because I'm in the middle of, uh, you know, the, the agency that we have, we just rebranded it because I the first brand I didn't really care for as much. But all the stuff we're doing is just like, I got to pour into this, I got to pour into this. And I want to get it running like a machine. Now, when you started dark work, is this, tell us about dark work. Is it, is it a, like a, is it a brand change for you? Is it a yeah. whole new program for you? What does it all of it entail and how did it come about? Yeah. Well, here's, this is the way I look at it. My work's an identity. I do not believe you can attain or sustain a dream above your current identity because your identity is who you are, your, your actions, your habits, your mindset, your, your optimism, pessimism. So that, that part of you creates a life. <clears throat> you can't create a life above your current habits and actions. If you don't like to sing, you're not going to be an amazing singer, right? So it's basically that. But then I go, well, in order to get there, something has to happen. All of us, we show up as we are right now. And the only thing that has, in fact, allowed us to be who we are, let's say the mind we have now, the habits we have now, the actions we have now is because of experiences. Those experiences created us. Here's an example. If I have a dog, I have two. If, if you were bit by a dog as a kid and my dog walks in the house, you freak out because your experience is dogs are bad. You're wired as an identity to go, oh, I don't like dogs, right? If a person grew up with dogs, they loved them. Well, a dog walks in, oh, look, a dog, because you grew up with dogs. The sheer experience wired you psychologically and neurologically to an identity level to who you become. And so I go, well, that has already been done for you, but it happened the wrong way. It either happens on demand or when crap hits the fan. And for most of us, it's when crap hits the fan. Everything goes sideways. What do I do? And all of a sudden we start fixing and then we go, oh, I didn't know I could do that. You're, you're, you know, all of a sudden made aware of your amazing abilities. And I go, what if we did it on demand? Because here's the truth. The goal for me is to, to elevate your identity, to optimize for peak performance. And imagine to the top of a hill, right? Just imagine a, a basic hill out in the middle of somewhere is the bottom of the hill, a top of the hill. Top of the hill is where we want to go. Bottom of the hill is where your identity is. There must be something that brings you up the hill, a gondola or a car, right? That's the vehicle. The vehicle for us is what's called the dark work. The unsexy, unseen, misunderstood, ridiculed work that we do when it's the glowing computer at two in the morning, trying to figure out the fireside chat app, right? How does this thing work, right? It's the, uh, it's the conversations had with your team in the background, the stressful stuff. I got to film this video. I got to create this. I got to go through this compliant, like all these little nuances that no one sees. But that's the thing that's taking us up to the top of the hill where I go, oh, no, no. I've done vastly too much to not have this podcast succeed, to not have myself get this job, to not launch this business and not get the guy, get the girl. It's just too much we've done. And so for me, my work now is going, I want to have people fall back in love with that sexy, dark work, the, the process more than the destination, but not do it when crap hits the fan, but do it on demand. So our, our methodology is called a dark work experience. It's an actual experience that rewires you psychologically, and neurologically to be that next level so you can attain and sustain the dream you want. Gotcha. So <clears throat> when you take dark work out to the world, how does it, what is your go to market strategy with it? So we've actually, uh, we're refining it. We're almost done. And so one is a podcast. And here's the way I want this podcast to rock because it goes podcast. Then we have coaching and consulting speeches that we have and then content, right? And it's going to be the way a brand delivered. So we're having a company create four videos that are very unique to our three archetypes, athletes, executives, entrepreneurs. Not everybody can, in a sense, go like, I adapt to that and I, I resonate with it. But those are our three archetypes that we think are the best fit for our brand. But at the same time, is going to be something that gets you to understand what a dark work experience is. So you desire it for coaching, consulting. We just got back from Amazon doing a consulting gig for them for dark work. But I know one of the executives is a client of mine. So it kind of was an easier walk into the, the company. So the way I look at it is I go, well, I want people to go, I get a dark work experience. And so the podcast we're launching is designed in a way to where I find unique individuals in the world. 
and I extract from them that dark work experience. What did they do that nobody saw? Like, you know, Michael Phelps talks about for whatever years he was always in a pool. What did that look like? Did he plan ahead? Was he scheduling things? Was he calling? Had, did somebody have to call and find a pool? You know, what was he bringing for food? How was he taking care? Like all these little nuances you never saw. What was that? I know Kobe Bryant talks about when he used to fly to practice and get there, you know, six, seven in the morning and work out before the main practice, right? What did that look like? Who was taking care of scheduling? Who opened the gym? Like these weird little things that you won't think about. And I want that to be framed up in podcast form so people can go, oh, I intimately understand what a dark work experience looks like. It's not just this arbitrary thing. So that, I say, delivers the brand concept to the world through an entertaining manner. And then from there, you'd be able to have, to have social content that you can see. And I want it to be like shareable in a sense of like, yeah, like fire you up in that like 30, 60 second window. Just really unique, simple, clean stuff. Uh, to when you see the brand, it's like if, it's like if, uh, if Nike had a personal development arm. That's kind of how I look at it. Like, I want that clean, cool, sexy. And so it's got that dark, to get that grit to it. So that's that part of it. And the coaching consulting is, if you like this, if it seems like you're like, I, I buy into this, there's an apparel portion to it. So I have, we just spent a great thousands of dollars on multiple pieces of apparel from a company that makes amazing quality. And uh, so we have items that are, I call it little lifestyle items. So you can have a timer, you can have, you know, the headphones, you can have a t-shirt, hoodie, like jogger, like all these cool things that are like, I'm talking world-class quality stuff to where you have a piece of a brand because I want you to feel like when you're out in public, like, yeah, I, I believe in this concept. Somebody goes, what is dark work? You can go, it's about work in the dark to win in the light. Simple. Right? I want that to be out. So people will have the merch portion of it. Uh, and then from there, it's more of, if you want to go through this process as a community, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching, there's group coach, there's consulting. So we will actually guide you through a curated process that in fact is a dark work experience. And so in that, it, we literally have like actual tangible tools that you put on your wall in your house. We have an app that got built that's specific for the dark work tracking portion. Uh, as a full like curriculum, you'd walk through the videos to set yourself up and then to walk through. And this being accountable. The idea is I want to get you into that rhythm. Mm -hmm. I want people, if they go, I buy into this, I'm not just buying a t-shirt, but I want to be somebody better. I want to become the person who gets to have what I want. I want to give you that actual methodology and the tools to support you on that journey. So we have different like avenues to do that as well. Love it, man. I love it. Uh, I actually uh, just dropped something. I got uh, that one agency. Like we're doing the same kind of thing, but with that one, that brand. Yes. And I love building brands, bro. It's like the, it's like my favorite thing. And I love mm -hmm. leaning into it and then thinking of like creatively, like how can we put this on other things that it would relate to until so people feel that brand, right? Be that yeah. one, right? Mm -hmm. Do the dark work. That's like that, that's that's important. So um, when you're pricing your, your uh, packages up and all that, how do you – What's the process? Because for entrepreneurs that are on here and they're thinking about like, well, how do I figure out a price for something? Like, how do you yeah. price your stuff up? You don't have to tell us the amounts, but I mean, how do you determine know. what you're going to charge? Uh, I think of the value and I think of the level at which someone will, two things. One, pay at a level that's just uncomfortable enough to pay attention. So I need them to invest at a level because I've given things out that's super cheap or free because I want to help people out. And the problem is when I've done that, and this is every time, every time I've done this, the people don't show up the right way for themselves, not for me, but for themselves. So I give discounts. I'm talking almost 0% of people actually show up and do the work at the right level. So I go, what's a level um, that's a high, but that's also not just high enough for me, but the demographic I'm going towards. So when I go to a consulting organization, we have a rate that I know is like just at that level of, okay, this seems like it's in line with most of the other organizations that are doing the things we do, but I want to be on the higher edge of it. So it's seen as more quality. So we have it at, at that level. Then when I go to the, the entrepreneur, the offer changes based on how to explain it. There's the product and then there's the offer, right? So when I go to an entrepreneur, I know based on I'm talking to, if they have a team, uh, but there are different things moving, if they're already making revenue, I know the price point at which I need to go and the offer structure to support them best to get them into a flow to grow. Because you can't grow your business more than you've grown yourself. So my job is to have them grow themselves in this process. So I'm looking at what's a level that's just uncomfortable enough for them, but also the level where they're going to invest to get the best return, invest energy-wise. So I have to find a point where I'm like, okay, what does that look like? And that's trial and error. I can get nowadays within like a five to $7,000 range of what that looks like for them. Then I play with it and tweak it. And usually after two or three launches of something, I'll find it. Uh, then for the individual who's just, you know, mom, dad, whatever it is, same exact product, right? It's the same process of the, the you know, it's a whole 91 day system we go through. It's the same exact thing we're doing but I'm doing it in a different structure. It may not be as much one-on-one -on -one support as I might give to the business owner or as much of a team, right? It might be more group, more community. And so that person's price point has to go, if I look at this, is it at the level of like an iPhone? I try to look, like, that's my thing, because people will pay 
for an iPhone and find a way. But, you know, you start doubling that price of it's like, ah, it's just that they have a regular set income from a job they have. If they haven't saved money, this is kind of like a dabbling thing. They play in that realm of like, you know, between 800 to $1,500 is really where they feel comfortable. And I get it Whole, wholeheartedly understand. So I go, how can I provide the product to them at a level that is, is smart with the offer structure of what they get support wise, what tools they get, all that kind of stuff. And so I just, I kind of, I price it at that realm and I structure it straight through. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. And and as you're going through this, what is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now that you're trying to like work through right now with dark work and everything uh, that you're putting together? Like when you woke up this morning, what was yeah. something that you were like, cause it's Monday, we're recording this yeah. is on Monday. I know mm-hmm. I'm asking these questions cause I know <laughs> I go through this stuff, but like what, what was on your mind this morning? Challenge wise. Uh, it was two things. One is I have a whole other company called Speak to Freedom where I teach people how to create this business of speaking, coaching, consulting. Because the other arm of obviously dark work is the speaking portion, which is me. Well, the brand in of itself is its own brand. I don't want the, the dark work brand to be Anthony Trucks. I am the guy that's in a lead in the beginning, kickstarted off, all of the keynotes and kind of move. The, the battle I run into now, it's not a bad one, actually. It's where do I make sure I'm given an ample time it needs to launch? And then how do I launch when it's good, not great? And most people go, why would you want to launch when it's not great? I go, because great to me is relative. Great to me is this thing that's unique and I may never reach it because I know what my vision of that is. However, one person said this years ago, they said, people that operate at a higher tick, your good is better than most people's great. So get it out when it's good. Let the world help you make it great. Mm-hmm. And so I've been in this space where it's like, it's good. I, I'm The website's almost there. Got the copy out to the guys are working on that portion of it. The apparel portion is there. The branding is there. The podcast logo art just got done <clears throat> last week. So everything's it's coming along and I go, it's looking really good. And I go, okay, now that it's good, now it's time to launch. And I want all the little pieces of systems in place before it launches. I think one of the biggest issues that people have with brands when they launch them or anything, even personal brand, is they launch something and they go, this is who I am. And hold on. And they go, this is who I am. And as they go out and go, this is who I am, they aren't consistent with who they said they're going to be. I'm going to do a podcast this time. I'm going to do this this time. I'm going to create this this time. And so what I find is people launch things. They don't have systems in place. They get overwhelmed. They, they, they drop the ball somewhere. And as an individual watching this, your brand go down, uh, what I'm seeing is, can I trust this person? Can, can they, were they going to be in the live when they said they were? They're going to be on the, the in, you know, clubhouse every single Are they going to be there? Because if you don't, you fall apart and all of a sudden you don't realize what your brain just took a, a value hit in somebody's mind. So everything for me, when it comes time, even if it's like, Hey, the apparel goes on the website, that's not small. I wouldn't just saying, Hey, it's for sale. I'm going, if the apparel's up there and somebody purchases, how do I get that packed and out the door in 24 hours? Make that experience. How do I be like Amazon in that aspect? If somebody goes, I want to do a dark work experience. What does that look like when they've clicked the button? So they don't get buyer's remorse. Do they get an email? Is there some video that comes out? What's that whole flow look like? Uh, what does the touch point of the very first piece of social content look like that puts to a link? What's the landing page look like? The follow-up page look like? What's the video content? Everything. And so when I put it in place, for me, even for the social to be consistently there, I go, who's the team that's going to do that? How many pieces of content do we need in advance? What does our rhythm look like for creating content so it's always there the day we said? So those little pieces are what I have to look at before I go, all right, world, here we go. Now I'm still making certain pieces, getting them done, but that's my biggest challenge is, is making sure that I'm I'm getting to the point where it's, it feels good so I can launch. But me saying good isn't just the visuals. It's the entire system that make the experience of my brand something you want to do work with and, and business with in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I love that, man. I love <laughs> systems and processes, man. It's, it's uh, the flow has got to be seamless because if you, especially if you're coaching what you're coaching, you got to be practicing it yourself, you know, and that, that, that image <clears throat> Oh, comes from you initially is important. So, all right, final question as we wind down here, Anthony. Oh man, what are what what is? I know it flew by. What is poured in? What is poured into you that has created you? Like, what is the like? I guess the the favorites and the the most impactful, whether it's mentors or books or concepts. Give me a couple of those that really stick out in your mind. Um, like statements. Well, no, I mean, I'm talking about mentors or books. Oh yeah, you know what? I look back. One of the greatest mentors was my high school, or my high school college football coach, Don Pell, man, DP. I mean, I have, you know, I had great high school coaches. They were good for the time. My college coach was horrible. I hated his guts when I was there. And you go, well, why would you actually say this guy's the best? And I go, well, when I look back at this point as a man, every individual who made me better in the moments I hated them, 
because it was just hard. They just made it difficult. I didn't, you wouldn't let me get away with my excuses or whatever it was. You just, you made me do things I didn't want to do. But then I remember like when I went my rookie year to the NFL, I played for John Gruden. It was a walk in the park. It was like, this is, you know, everybody's like, oh, Chucky's hard. And my guy, I hated my guy so much because he was just so hard. And I go, it's a walk in the park. And so I look back and I go, well, I don't, I don't like what he did. It was actually way, way better for me. Now I have a great deal of respect and thankfulness for the way that he pushed us because that takes energy as a father now. I know how much energy it takes to make people do stuff. And I asked him years later, I said, how come you were so hard? He goes, when you're a kid, when you, you were a kid and your parents drop you off to me at 18, I have you for four years away from your mom and dad. He says, my job is not to make you a better football player. It's to make you a better man. Football is my vehicle. And I got it. I go, that's what it is. And so for me, I've always looked at like the situation I'm in with people. It's not to make them better the thing. Like I have, you know, I teach speakers and I coach them. It's not just to make them better speakers, to make them better humans, so that the, the, the speaking becomes a vehicle to show that better humanity. But it's like a duality of life. You're always in situations that can improve who you are. I'm hoping they're in a vehicle you can actually share who you are.